Last time we wired the server and client together. We can reveal tiles, but they're not turning back. So uh, we need to track time, and we'll do that by calling a tick function at regular intervals. So create game, reveal two different tiles, and we expect there to be two revealed tiles. No surprises there. After two ticks, this should still be true. We need to keep the tiles open a moment or the game would be rather difficult. Okay, let's make this error go away. After one more tick, they should be concealed. I guess we could add a countdown to the tiles. We'll check for concealment, meaning if after matching you still can't reveal tiles, we need to start counting down. Associate conceal countdown? Sure. Now we'll count them down. Another map V over tiles. I'm not very happy about this repeating everywhere. Let's refactor it a bit later. So, uh, let's look at conceal countdown. If it's nil, do nothing. If it's one, disosh both conceal countdown and revealed. Otherwise, countdown. Hmm, what's this? Oh, it's an old test. Yeah, it's too specific. It shouldn't care about all that. Let's clean this up straight away. We really only care that an H1 and an H2 was revealed. And let's use sort to clean up the random instead of set. So we can have some symmetry with the following tests. Fix these two. Okay, the rest looks good. Let's do that map v refactoring too. Focus on map v. Yeah. These are all structured the same. We'll make an update tile function. Takes the game and the function. So this encodes the fact that we must use map v since we're associating with indexes. Focus on match revealed. This will only take a single tile and we'll use update tiles instead. Next is Wake the Dead. Same here. In a concealment. Light faces. Yeah, <laughs> should be hide face. Last one. Hmm. 
Nice. Only one reference to map we. Huh. And it's still green. Yeah. Okay, moving on. We've got our tick function. Now we must use it. Let's move this out of our web namespace. Start game loop. It's more plumbing than game logic, so let's make a new namespace. Game loop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Underscores, please. Silly JVM. So, to tick at regular intervals, we need some help. Timeout is a core async function that creates a channel, waits some milliseconds, then closes. We need a channel that won't close, but sends a message every few milliseconds instead. So, tick every milliseconds. This is our channel. Return it. Loop. Block a while. Send the tick. And if that went fine, keep on doing it. Okay, looks good. Create our tick channel. 200 millis. We have two channels that can return now, so we need alts. Let's move the message look up down first. It's not always tile index anymore either. Okay, so alts takes a list of channels and returns a value port tuple. Looking at the port, if it's the WebSocket channel, reveal the tile. If it's the tick channel, recur after ticking. Yeah, I think this should work. Reset. Hey! Huh. Hmm. <laughs> Look, the faces are lost when they animate back. That's because we remove the faces when they're concealed, but the animation takes a little while to complete. So, we need to keep the faces around for a little while longer. Yeah. Okay, let's write a test. Two different tiles tick four times, and faces should still be there. So, faces should not be hidden while it's counting down. And we extend the conceal countdown slightly. But we remove the revealed flag early, so the animation begins. This means you can also reveal a new pair of tiles while the old pair animates back, which is rather nice. Uh, we also have to count down here. Uh, feels a bit clunky, but fair enough. Okay, let's try it out. Nice! Next episode, time will be running out. Mm -hmm.